This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We are here at ACT Expo. We are in the International Truck Booth. We got the EMV behind us. We're going to catch up on what's new with it. We, we talked about it and did a walk around about a year or so ago at a different show. We're going to see how the product's evolved and what applications it's going into. Come along. Hey Bruce, great to see you again. So we are going to get an update on the EMV because we did this about two years ago at a different show I want to see. So Correct. what's new with the truck? Well, thanks. Um, we've done a lot of integration work with our bodybuilders, okay. truck equipment manufacturers, TEMs. We've brought out some options. One of them is available in the market right now. We'll talk about where we put it, and that's EPTO. Okay. It yep. allows you to hook up hydraulic units real easily. Yep. And we're also bringing out later this summer ePower, which okay. is basically just plugging in and grabbing power from the chassis battery. So oh, okay. So two options to be able to integrate easier. Uh, that's been the course since t last time we talked about right. just working with various bodybuilders. We've probably got about 12 or 15 different applications since okay. last time we talked. And it's all a lot about just expanding the breadth of applications for the vehicle. Right. Should we walk around a little sure. bit? See what, see what's new here? So one of the biggest changes we did is we relocated the charge port from behind the passenger side okay. to right here oh yeah okay okay underneath the door in a battery box yeah. um we brought the charge port which is both uh it's a sae j1772 yep but it's also got level two and level three okay and we put the 12 volt disconnect in here as well so that's all um in a battery box and then when you do a epto option we grab the power from the rear yep and we put we take out one of the two 12 volt batteries that are in here okay and we put the motor behind and it's a 40 kilowatt continuous, 60 kilowatts um, peak, okay. which equates to about 54 and 80 horsepower. Okay, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> behind right here around. is where the SAEB flanges that they can hook up the hydraulics to. Okay. So uh, very common, like, that's a solution that Altec has chosen. Okay. To, ru to run 55-foot uh, areas. So wh why move the charge over here? What was the, the Customer. idea behind that? Customer oh, yeah? request. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, they wanted it similar to the ICE products, where it's familiarity. Oh, of, sure. Um, and just... Some of it was clean up on the chassis too. Yeah. It's a lot neater packaging yeah. and you know more concise. We're trying as hard as we can to get the clean CA. Right. right now the last item we got is the battery thermal management system that is still there, but we got a plan for that too, right. to clean up the CA and get to be able to shorten up that cab to axle dimension. Right. So we can accommodate more bodies. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the EPTO because we talked about this last time, but like what is required in terms of power? How does it impact the battery? Because, you know, I mean, I, I feel like we kind of generalize it too, but you need a lot of power to power the, uh, the bodies on some of these applications. So what do you look at in developing and evolving that? One of the biggest questions we ask the bodybuilders today with an ICE product and a PTO and a 50-gallon diesel tank, they really don't worry about their duty cycle right. on the PTO. Tomorrow you do. Yep. And that's the number one question of... I have with the bodybuilders is how much power do you need for how long? And then we look at that over that shift cycle or when, when you can opportunity charge because that's becoming a big discussion point right now is, well, maybe I have a half hour break or 15 minute break that I can take and charge a vehicle. How much charge can I get back? We work through all that as part of our consulting, right. which with the three C's of consulting, the charging and the customer onboarding, that consulting piece is where we talk through the applicability and how you can do that charging and, and even get more use out of the vehicles. Right. Well, and yeah, you mentioned the, the range of applications too, right? A lot of these work trucks can go in the remote locations as well. and. Opportunity charging there can be few and far between. There is, you know, in the construction segment, there is some kind of mobile power and that kind of that kind of thing too. But yeah, really understanding the duty cycle, it has to be super specific yes. for that customer and application. And, and some of them are really simple. Like the unit we've got behind us from uh, rugby, this this unit we actually took and worked with the bodybuilder. One of the biggest things right now is all the bodybuilders are working to lightweight their bodies. Oh yeah. So we took out roughly 1,600 pounds oh, wow. on the previous version that you and I talked yeah. about. Yeah. So this truck curb weight is down from the 18,560 to just under 17,000, 16,980. Oh, wow. Okay. So working with the bodybuilders, we're getting the bodies lighter, and that's improving, I'll say, the applications. Right, because it's not just, you know, I, I, I think a traditional light weighting, it's like fuel efficiency in the diesel world, right? But here it's kind of power usage, and it yeah. takes less power to raise and lower the bed then, less right? Less power to, and then 
uh, ultimately it's very similar to fuel economy. Yeah. Instead of miles per gallon, we're talking kilowatt hours per mile, right? right? And what ends up happening here is if I weigh less and you know it's a diminishing load or whatever, you use less kilowatt hours per mile. It's the same thing. Yeah. Well, it's but the yeah, same but it, equation. It, what's funny is it's backwards because I've been talking a lot about that here yes. at the show too, and you want a lower kilowatt usage number. MPG, we always want that higher Correct. one. Correct. You want a lower yeah, kilowatt Yeah, it's kind of the one. inverse when right. you're looking at it. And that's that's part of the, again, back to the consulting, we walk that customer or consumer through that so that they understand the difference between the two. This truck, you know, as it sits going down the road, you're probably 1.4 to 1.6 kilowatt hours. Okay. And, you know, I got some dry van people that are running, I'll say potato chips and that type of load, and they leave in the morning 20, in the low 20s. They're getting 155, 170 miles out of okay. the unit. Okay. Whereas if you go to like the utility trucks, and they get, they're curbing at 30,000, 33,000, mm -hmm. you're more in that 1.8 to 2.0 kilowatt hours. Okay. So okay. that's where the weight matters. Right. It's just like running I know. diesel, right? Wrapping my head around you the know, numbers it, it, The heavier it weighs, the more power it takes. <laughs> same, same thing applies. Awesome, Bruce, thanks for taking the time. You're welcome. Great catching up with you. Thanks, same here.